Thank you. Uh, my name is John Hunter, and um, I'm the pastor of First African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Los Angeles. And along with me is Reverend Dr. Tamer Bryant, who is a minister on our staff. She's the director of our women's ministry, and uh, she's also the sister of the national spokesperson, Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant. Dave, it's good to see you. We met in Washington um, uh, about a month or so ago. Let me tell you why I'm here and why, why I'm excited. First of all, um, like many people, I've been moved by the commitment of the occupiers of Wall Street as they have been seen in various cities across the country. And as the movement grew um, within the hearts of many of us who love the Lord, who love righteousness, who love justice, we said we've got to come together. And so um, under the leadership of, of, of Dr. Jamal Bryan and, and uh, Ben Chavis, we started having conference calls across the nation of ministers from every generation, from the sages in their 70s and 80s to uh, younger ministers to uh, every denomination that you can imagine, starting to discuss how we wanted to get involved and how we wanted to even take it to uh, another level in some other ways with specific data demonstrating the inequities, demonstrating the injustices of the extraction uh, of corporations, of wealth, and all the things that we know with some specificity about what we want to change. We recognize what has been done in our country. We recognize the greed uh, of Wall Street. We recognize the lack of regulation and what has taken place from uh, predatory lending practices, foreclosures, the lack of jobs, uh, the, the lack of opportunities um, from, from education and the like. So we are forging ahead, and you're going to hear so much more in the coming weeks and months. On February 14th, we're going to formally announce our desire to ask all people of conscience all over the country to extract money from one of the five major banks, that, uh, from Wells Fargo, Bank of America, City, etc., and to put $30 or more uh, into either a minority-owned bank or a credit union, you a community Woo! bank. This signifies, and that's the first step, this signifies a desire. If people understand money. Uh, they may not be impressed by marches alone, but it signifies a shifting in wealth that is just a drop in the ocean of what can take place. We know the arguments and the debates that are taking place in Congress. We know the debates about paying of taxes and of, of, of Pell Grants and, and access to education and uh, health care and all of this. And now the people are rising up. This is not a black issue. This is not a Latino issue. This is not a white issue. This is a people issue that I believe has the potential to unite us all in ways that we have not seen perhaps in a generation. Because it's affecting us all. The quality of America life. The opportunity to have the dream. And so uh, this has been... Uh, 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 labeled Occupy the Dream to go along with Occupy Wall Street because the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King, who if he were alive would be a part of this and would be helping to lead this because he in fact uh, was an advocate for those in poverty. And you know his dream that, that we would come together regardless of our race, come together based on our love of humanity and our desire to have the best for everyone in terms of opportunity and living together as brothers and sisters. Right. We are rolling up our sleeves and we are going to be galvanizing, organizing, moving, and doing everything. There is there's a place for everyone. And so we are indebted to the founders, David, of Occupy Wall Street. For those who stepped out with a vision that has captured all of our imagination. And, and has moved us. Finally, let me let me share this. Um, 
it was maybe a month and a half or so ago. I was watching 60 Minutes on a Sunday evening, and we have three services at First Amy Church on Sunday nights. I'm usually a little fatigued. And I was watching a program about children and poverty in America. And the particular family that they spent most of the program or the segment of the program on was a family where the father was the head, the mother was deceased, and there were two children, and they lived out of a truck. They happened to be white. And uh, they told their story, how they showered in gas stations and other places, and how they were embarrassed, the children were, that they did not have a traditional home and whatnot. And as it told the story, they then expanded to tell the stories of others. And I was so disturbed that in a land and country of abundance, of abundance, that we have now one in every four children in America living in poverty. And some would say that is an underestimation and calculation. And so we recognize that this is ridiculous. This is ungodly. It's immoral. Uh, it's it's uh, inhumane that uh, there should be such a debate going on in our country about whether corporations should pay taxes at all, or fair taxes, or whether the wealthy should pay taxes. And, and we know what has taken place over the years, that we find ourselves uh, indebted to China, we find ourselves uh, uh, turned against one another, and uh, it, it's a shame. And so we're determined to bring justice, economic, economic equity, uh, opportunities that uh, we believe our country should be built on, should be stabilized on to reality. We're prepared to march, we're prepared to protest, we're prepared to engage in lawsuits, we're prepared to advocate uh, and, and to then leverage our collective economic power. That is something that we all can do. You're going to be hearing more about that as we organize ourselves here in the religious community even more so, and the African American clergy becoming more involved. Across the country today, if you did not know, in many Federal Reserve Banks, and this is a branch, but the regional one is in San Francisco for us, uh, there have been um, uh, ministers uh, of various denominations and congregants and people going to Federal Reserve Banks with wheelchairs, with crutches, um, with canes, uh, symbolizing the crippling of, of the American economy and the crippling of people. And uh, this is just a start. In February, you will see even more. We'll be articulating our desire to get people to galvanize from organizations to individuals, various entities to extract money and to ultimately divest and we'll be doing even more. So I am delighted to be in the midst of these committed uh, brothers and sisters uh, joining with you in solidarity and moving to make this country, this place, the reflection of what we believe our God and Creator would have it to be for us all. God bless you and thank you so much.